Greetings all, Ferrari Matt 601 here. Continuing our commentary and analysis on the Hoboken rail crash on September 29th, I'd like to explore some alternative theories on how this train might have been able to be stopped, assuming a complete loss of control over braking and throttle. We are on the North Jersey coastline route in Train Simulator 2016. I do not have the capacity to recreate the Pascack Valley line, however the approach into Hoboken Terminal is quite similar to how it is on the southern end of the Pascack Valley line. What we're going to explore in this video is uh, a number of theories on how the train might have been able to have been brought to a stop assuming a loss of control from the cab car. The train is running in a push configuration with our GP40 locomotive at the rear. So you can see this is providing our motive power. It's a diesel locomotive. So although uh, this portion of the line is electrified, we are running diesel power. Control is administered from this cab car here, which has no motive power of its own. It's uh, simply a remote control unit allowing operation of the locomotive and um, all of the braking systems, of course, from this front location. So what we're going to explore is the handbrake in this section. We want to see if the handbrake would have been able to stop this train assuming no throttle, but assuming a complete loss of braking. So what we're going to do is we're going to accelerate up to our speed limit, which uh, on this section of the line is 75 miles per hour. It then starts to go up, go down rather, to 30 miles per hour once we approach the Bergen Tunnels. I'm going to assume no brakes, and assuming that the train that crashed in Hoboken stopped at Secaucus Junction, approximately three, three and a half miles from the Hoboken Terminal, this may be representative of how quickly the train might have been able to accelerate before approaching the speed restriction. So there's 30 miles an hour. and 40. You can see the acceleration for a train is not too bad considering we're on diesel power and at that only one locomotive. Down at the bottom of the screen here uh, where you see uh, representations of the cars and locomotive, uh, you'll also see handbrake controls. So when I click handbrake, that is when uh, handbrakes will be applied. We're coming up to the 30 mile per hour speed restriction in about uh, three-tenths of a mile. When we hit that speed restriction, I'm going to close the throttle, but I'm not going to apply the train brakes. Instead, uh, to simulate a loss of control over the train brakes, I'm going to apply hand brakes on all cars and the locomotive. So we're coming up on our speed restriction now. Stand by. And there it is. There's the speed limit. We've closed the throttle. And now, hand brakes applied. So there's no more power coming from the locomotive, however, we only have hand brakes. So the pneumatic brakes that act on all wheels, controlled by the cab or from the locomotive, are not functional. You can see we are getting a speed reduction, however, it's not particularly great in terms of the uh, speed at which it occurs, but we are getting a reduction in speed. Approaching the Bergen Tunnels, we are going to pass uh, over some switch points onto this side track. I don't know if that's accurate in terms of the trajectory followed by the train that crashed, but uh, that's what we're doing here. And you can see the amount of time that it would have taken to slow this thing down strictly on handbrakes. Now, the simulator does not have the capacity to simulate brake wear or brake heat, so it's unclear to me as to whether or not this would have even functioned to this extent in the real world, because I assume these handbrakes are only designed to keep cars from rolling once they are already stopped on a siding or whatever, so this is not uh, meant to be representative of the actual capabilities of the handbrakes, just in theory what they may have been able to do.
can see the amount of time that it's taken just to get us down to 27 miles per hour. Passing through 19, about to come into the last tunnel here. And at this point you can readily see that uh, although it would have taken a long time, assuming no control over the train brake but a closed throttle, the train certainly would have been able to slow to a safe speed and uh, it looks like we're actually going to come to a stop well short of the Hoboken Yard. So if handbrakes had been applied, theoretically it may have been possible to stop the train. Again, I cannot account for brake wear or brake heating, which would have been significant from a speed as high as we started from in this run. But you could see that handbrakes applied on all cars and the locomotive may have been able to bring the train to a much safer speed, if not stop it entirely. And uh, you can see here we're rolling out past two and a half miles an hour, and uh, we are going to come to a stop. So that is a stop using handbrakes only from a position somewhat equivalent to the run from Secaucus Junction to the Hoboken Yard. Our next scenario is one that's very unrealistic. Because the train was running in a push configuration with the locomotive at the back, it's my understanding that the locomotive is unmanned in this condition. However, what might have been possible in terms of stopping this thing had the locomotive been manned, meaning that we've lost all control over the train brakes. However, there's somebody in the locomotive able to actuate the locomotive's independent brake. Normally, this is not something that would be done because the locomotive brakes are not effective in stopping something that's heavier than the locomotive, such as an entire consist. However, had the locomotive been manned and the independent brakes applicable, what might have been done? For this situation, I'll be operating the train from the locomotive, so that's at the other end of the train. This is not realistic, but assuming somebody would have been able to be inside the locomotive, what might have happened? So we're starting from the same location we did before, approximately three miles away from Hoboken Yard. So full power and uh, we're going to come up as close as we can to our 75 mile per hour speed limit before we get to our 30 mile per hour speed restriction. What we will do in this test is, once again, to cut engine power but not apply train brakes. The only brakes that we will be applying are the independent brakes on the locomotive. So we are one half mile from our 30 mile per hour zone. We're still accelerating at full power coming up on 50 miles per hour. Quarter mile now to the speed restriction, approaching the Harrison Bridge. Tenth of a mile. And there's the 30 zone. So, cutting engine power, and now applying only the locomotive brakes. You can see the center gauge there coming up in pressure, past 50, 60, about 63 PSI. So the locomotive brakes have been applied. 
The engine is spooling down, power has been cut to the traction motors, and you can see our speed is reducing. Speed's coming down quite a bit faster than it did under the handbrakes. However, still not nearly as quickly as it might have done under the train brakes. We are going to enter the Bergen tunnels, it looks, but uh, already at a much lower speed than what uh, we did on our previous run with the handbrakes only. So coming into the tunnels, we're going to cut into the uh, cab view on the locomotive because the simulator can't render an outside view when we're in a tunnel. But you can see we're already below the posted speed limit. There we go, we're in the cab. Speed continuing to come down. Posting through 12, through 10, and once again, as before, we are going to come to a complete stop simply on the independent brakes on the locomotive. This was not possible in this situation because the locomotive was unmanned. However, in theory, possible to stop the train on the independent brakes. Again, I cannot take brake wear or brake heating into account but theoretically, the independent brakes on the locomotive would have been able to stop this train. For our final scenario here, uh, we're going to go into our worst case scenario. Control from the cab car, all control is lost, the throttle is stuck wide open, and the only recourse the crew has in the roughly two minutes between the entrance to the Bergen tunnels and impact at the end of the platform in Hoboken is to apply hand brakes. So, starting from the same position as before, we release our brakes, we apply full power, as the controls recycle through, there we go, we accelerate up and then we get to our 30 mile per hour zone right before the Harrison Bridge, and then we desperately apply handbrakes with the locomotive still running at full power. And we'll see whether or not those handbrakes have any effect on what the train does. Okay, so we're coming up on our 30 mile per hour zone. There's 30 miles an hour. So still accelerating hard, handbrakes applying. Three, two, one, now. Handbrakes are applied. We're at full power. We have no control over the train brakes. And you can see at full power from the locomotive, even though the handbrakes are applied across the entire train, we are getting a minimal speed reduction, but it's in tenths of a mile per hour per about every 10 seconds. 
So the train obviously has sufficient power to overcome the effect of the handbrakes as we go into the Bergen Tunnels. Still above 58 miles per hour, full handbrakes and full throttle. Coming to the exit of the tunnel now. 57.9 miles per hour, we're on a little bit of an upgrade for the moment as far as I can tell. So that's uh, accounting for a little bit of the decel that we're seeing, but still nowhere near enough to amount to anything significant. In 0.4 miles, we'll come into the yard limit on Hoboken. That is 15 miles per hour. As you can see, we are well above that. And obviously, we're well above the posted limit at this section, which is 30 miles an hour. Again, this is the absolute worst case scenario. No control whatsoever, the only recourse being to apply handbrakes in each car. Coming through the spaghetti noodles, the switches. At this point, it's possible the train may have derailed over these sudden curves, although, uh, that does not appear to be the case, as far as we can tell. Coming to the buffers at the end of the line. And you see impact at 57 miles per hour. Train coming to a rest in a position, at least cursorily from this restricted view, uh, in a position somewhat similar to the one we ended up seeing. So. Is that the worst case scenario? Is that what actually occurred? It's uh, it's impossible to determine that based off of the evidence that I've seen and uh, the little evidence that the NTSB released, but uh, you could see there the impact into the buffers at the end of the line at the end of the platform in Hoboken. And it's, uh, again, the NTSB investigation will tell more in due course, but uh, it's certainly possible that uh, a loss of braking and throttle control could have resulted in a scenario that we just simulated here. So again, inconclusive perhaps, but uh, we went through a number of scenarios that could have transpired theoretically to stop the train, and then we went through a total loss of control, resorting only to the handbrakes in an attempt to slow the train down, but as you could see at full throttle that it was impossible and the resulting impact looked somewhat similar to what we saw in reality. So, food for thought, perhaps. Thank you all very much for watching.